Learning mathematics is very, very difficult to many people, second only to learning how to speak English. Do you have difficulty? Don't be embarrassed. It's a lot of people don't know what they're doing when they get up there and do their mathematics. We're going to introduce you today to Fort Bend Tutoring, honey. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, FBT, and today we'll be talking about factoring by grouping. That's right. Factoring by grouping, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we got going on. So let's pull it up, right? Let's go ahead and check it out. All right. First of all, anytime you're factoring a polynomial, ladies and gentlemen, you always want to factor completely. And when I mean factor completely, that means that sometimes the directions will just say factor. However, there are times where you'll be able to continue to factor, in other words, factor multiple times in one problem. So always read your directions that say factor as factor completely every single time. The next thing to do is you always start out your problem of factoring by factoring out the greatest common factor, the GCF. So you always want to look for that when you are factoring polynomials every single time. Yeah, factor out the GCF, the greatest common factor. Look to see if all the terms have something in common. So that's what you want to do there. All right. Also, this method, factoring by grouping, is basically going to present itself to you anytime you have four terms. And matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, this is a made up value right here that I have for you. Just to remind you that it's not going to happen 100% of the time that either you'll be dealing with a prime polynomial, meaning that it cannot be factored whatsoever, or that means that you'll need to use a different method in order to factor it. So it's not 100% of the times that when you have four terms you can use factoring by grouping, but when presented with four terms, factoring by grouping is definitely one of the first procedures that you want to try to attempt to factor that polynomial. All right, so it'll be in the form most of the time of AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D. All right, so the majority of the time you'll see it in this format and you'll be like, oh, okay, I got four terms. This in descending order of the variable. Most likely, and if I'm asked to factor it, I'll need to factor by grouping. Well, I said all of these three things, factor completely, factor out the GCF, and if you have four terms, 96% of the time, in other words, not 100% of the time, will you be able to use factoring by grouping, but it's definitely what you should try first. All right, let's continue. Continue. Let's check out our first problem, ladies and gentlemen. But first, we'll be actually starting with a review. So the first thing I wanted to remind you guys about is factoring out the greatest common factor. Okay, cool. Well, that means that here in these two terms in problem number one, as the example in our review, we have 10x minus 20. Well, these two terms, keep it in mind that terms are separated by a plus or a minus sign, these two terms can both be divided by 10. They can both be factored by 10. So my GCF, my greatest common factor, is 10. So I'll write this result as 10 times the end result of this is going to be x minus 2. Because, ladies and gentlemen, factoring is division. So what I just did was I divided out 10 from the first term, and I divided out 10 from the second term, which is negative 20. So 10x divided by 10 leaves me with an x, and negative 20 divided by 10 leaves me with negative 2. And notice how your answer looks like a distributive property problem, which, by the way, is my favorite property, distributive property. Uh -huh. I really want to get those arrows popping. And in fact, I can just remind you that you can always get your arrows popping. In other words, 10 times x is 10x, and 10 times negative 2 is negative 20 to verify that you did it correctly, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so that's factoring out the GCF. And in this case, our greatest common factor was 10. All right, so let's check out the next problem in our review. Here, I have x cubed times a plus b minus 5 times a plus b. So in this example, first of all, how many terms do you see? All right, your choices are one term, two terms, four terms, six terms. How many terms do you see? Remember that terms are separated by plus or minus signs. Very good, ladies and gentlemen. The correct answer is two. This is our minus sign, which is going to separate this term, which is x cubed times a plus b, from the second term, which is negative 5 times a plus b. What do these two terms have in common? That's exactly right. They both have an a plus b in common. That's exactly right. They have a plus b in common. So factoring out a plus b from both of these terms, I'll have a plus b times x cubed minus 5. 
Notice how, after I factored out the a plus b from each of those two terms, I simply wrote in the parentheses here what was left over after I divided away the a plus b. So my answer for this particular problem is a plus b times the quantity of x cubed minus 5. And that's it. All right, so that wasn't factoring by grouping, but that was a quick review over factoring out the GCF, the greatest common factor. All right, so now let's get into what you actually came here for. Problems about factoring by grouping. All right, let's check it out. First of all, I have four terms here. So automatically, I'm going to be looking to see if I can factor by grouping. When factoring by grouping, it's a good idea to have your terms written in descending order of the variable. So you start with the highest exponent, and then you want to work your way down as far as the variables are concerned. So therefore, I have it written as x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 6. Your first step is going to be to group the first two terms uh -huh. using parentheses, always put a plus sign in the middle, and then group the last two terms. Now, one thing you should always keep in mind is that you always want at least one of these groups to have something in common other than one. So you're going to know that you're not going to be able to factor using this method if you can't get at least one group to have something in common, once again, other than one. If the original problem, as is written, doesn't give you a group that has something in common other than one, then you have two choices. One, you can rearrange it, or you may need to use a different strategy if it's factorable. Otherwise, it may be prime, meaning that you can't factor it at all. In this particular problem, we can move forward because notice how your first group does have something in common other than one, as well as your second group. So both groups here have something in common, so we're in a good position here. So let us check out what we can factor out of the first group. Out of the first group, I can factor out x squared. That's my GCF out of that first group. So factoring out x squared, I'm left with x plus 3. So remember, factoring out your GCF is division. So I divided away x squared from the first term. That left me with an x. And factoring out x squared or dividing x squared from 3x squared left me with 3. Remember, if you want to check to make sure that you factor correctly, simply multiply the results back together to see if you get the previous step. The next thing I want to do is factor out the GCF out of the second group. Never assume that what you're about to factor out is positive. So first of all, I'm going to analyze this second set of parentheses here and recognize that out of 2x plus 6, I can factor out a positive 2. So I'll be factoring out positive 2, and that'll leave me with x plus 3. Now that I've factored each of the groups, then you would hope that both of these binomials will be identical. If they are, then this is working out perfectly for factoring by grouping. If the sets of parentheses here are not identical, there's going to be a problem. Either one, you did not factor correctly or factor out the GCF correctly, or the second situation is that it may be prime, meaning that you cannot factor it at all. So because my parentheses here, my binomials are identical, then I can continue to factor this. Notice that this looks like our second review problem in that we have two terms and these two terms have x plus 3 in common. So I'm going to factor out that GCF, that greatest common factor out of those two terms, which is x plus 3, and that's going to leave me with x squared plus 2. This, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be my answer. Done and done. All right, so let's look over that process again. I started out by recognizing that I had four terms. I then, once I verified that everything was in descending order of x by its exponents, the highest exponent down to the lowest exponent, I grouped the first two terms, and then I grouped the last two terms, making sure that I had a positive sign between the two. Then I factored out the GCF from each of the two terms. As long as one of these groups have something in common other than one, it's good to go as far as factoring by grouping is concerned. I was able to factor out x squared, which left me with x plus 3. Out of the second group, I was able to factor out a positive 2, which left me with an identical x plus 3. Since they are the same, that means that that's our greatest common factor between these two terms. So I can factor out that x plus 3, and what's left over, that x squared, plus 2 is what went inside of the second set of parentheses. And this is my answer, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for problem number 1. All right, in problem number two, I have 8x cubed minus 12x squared plus 6x minus 9. Okay, so I'm going to group the first two terms together. So I have 8x cubed minus 12x squared 
Close parentheses, always put a plus sign between them, and I have 6x minus 9. Notice that both groups have something in common other than 1. All right, that's a good thing. So out of the first group, I can factor out 4x squared. So factoring out 4x squared, I'll be left with 2x minus 3. So remember, factoring out your GCF is the same thing as dividing by that same term. So I end up with 2x minus 3, knowing that the product of 4x squared in this binomial will give me that original 8x cubed minus 12x squared. Out of the second group, I can factor out a 3. So factoring out a 3 leaves me with 2x minus 3. Remember, I want these two sets of parentheses to be identical to one another, and they are. So I'm able to factor out the GCF for those two terms, which is going to be 2x minus 3. And what's left over is this 4x squared plus 3. And this is my answer. Keep in mind that you always want to make sure that your binomials that you have in your answer cannot be factored even further. That's why I always say to make sure that you are thinking about factoring completely. Sometimes you'll be able to continue to factor. But in this case, this is our answer right here. All right, that was problem number two. Checking out the next problem, we have problem number three. Once again, I have four terms, so I'm going to attempt to factor by grouping. And grouping the first two terms together, I have x cubed plus 8x squared. And notice that my third term is negative here. That's a negative 3x. My instructions are to always put a plus sign in between the groups. So I have a plus sign here, and I'm going to include that negative within the parentheses. So I have negative 3x minus 24. Out of the first group, I'm going to be able to factor out x squared. So factoring out x squared, I'm left with x plus 8. Out of the second group, I can factor out negative 3. Remember, you never want your first term inside the parentheses to be negative. So always, anytime your first term is negative inside of those parentheses, make sure you're factoring out a negative, and that negative that you're factoring out will affect both terms. So factoring out negative 3 will change the sign and divide everything by 3, which will leave you with x plus 8. Once again, I have binomials that are identical to one another. That's good. So that's my GCF, the x plus 8. So I'm going to factor out that x plus 8, and that's going to leave me with, oh, that's ugly. That's ugly 8. Let's fix that. All right, that's much better. x plus 8 times x squared minus 3. And this is my answer. Yep. That's it. So once again, once I recognized that these binomials were identical, I was able to factor that out as my GCF of those two terms and write down what remained, which was the x squared minus the 3. That went in my second set of parentheses, and this is my answer, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. All right. That was problem number three. Let's keep it moving. Okay? All right. Next problem. Here, I have the problem 7x cubed minus 14x squared minus x plus 2. I'm going to factor by grouping because I have four terms and hopefully I can get this into a situation to where I have at least one group that has something in common other than one. All right, remember, if the third term is negative, I hate that plus sign, better. If that, really it's not that better. Okay, let me start over. There it is. All right, I'm, I'm going to stick with this plus sign. So this third term here is negative. All right, that tells me to make sure I have a plus sign in between and to include that negative into the last set of parentheses. Out of the first group, I'm going to factor out 7x squared. So factoring out 7x squared, I'll be left with x minus 2. Then, out of the second group, I can factor out a negative 1. So factoring out negative 1, that leaves me with x minus 2. Remember, factoring out a negative will change the sign of both terms, all right? So keep that in mind as far as why we ended up with a positive x and a negative 2 here. By factoring out that negative 1, I'm able to change the sign, all right? And I have to show my 1 right here, okay? So notice that these two terms have x minus 2 in common. So I'm going to factor out this x minus 2, and that's going to leave me with 7x squared minus 1, and this is my my answer yeah that's my answer that's it all right good so next problem here in problem number five I have x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 20 so I'm going to group the first two terms together 
That's x cubed minus 5x squared. Because the third term is negative, I'm going to include a positive sign and include a negative inside the parentheses 4x plus 20, just like that. All right. Out of the first group, I'm able to factor out x squared. So factoring out x squared, that leaves me with x minus 5. Factoring out a negative 4 out of the second group, mind you, that first term inside the parentheses is negative. So I know to factor out a negative something. So in this case, I'm able to factor out a negative 4. Notice how I didn't assume that I was going to be able to factor out a negative or a positive anything. I waited to find out what the GCF was first. So factoring out negative 4, I end up with x minus 5. And that, once again, matches the previous binomial, so I know that that's my GCF of the two terms. I'm factoring out the x minus 5, and I'm left with x squared minus 4. This time, notice that the second set of parentheses is what we call a difference of two squares. So if you haven't already, check out our video on factoring a difference of two squares. All right, so I got the link right down there, okay? So then, once I've done that, I'll bring down this x minus 5, and knowing that this is a difference of two squares, I'm going to open up two sets of parentheses. The square root of x squared is x, so that's going to be the first term in each of those binomials. And the square root of 4 is 2, so I have a 2 in each of those, and then I'm going to go with a plus, and then a minus because I'm an optimist. That's right. I always lead with my plus sign. So all you pessimists out there, I'm sure you want to write a negative sign first. You go right ahead because either way is correct. Bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, this is my answer. When it comes to the factors, ladies and gentlemen, when you're factoring by grouping, it doesn't matter the order. So any order of these binomials multiplying on one another is A-OK -okay as far as your answer is concerned. This is just how I do mine, all right? So the order is always going to come out consistent for me because I do it the same way every single time. All right, there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that concludes factoring by grouping with Fort Bend Tutoring and Mr. Witt. I appreciate all the comments that you guys give on all the videos, so keep them coming. Also, please like us on our Facebook page, Fort Bend Tutoring. Follow us on Twitter, at Fort Bend Tutoring. And if you can, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and donate. That's right. Keep these free videos coming your way. And we have a link on the YouTube channel, Fort Bend Tutoring, that says donate for more free videos. Click on that. And if you can, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate it. Once again, this is Mr. Witt. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? You could do all that on tutormemath.net.